The ethanol that is made here is taking corn, crushing the corn, making a flour out of it, adding two types of enzymes to that corn or flour mix. We go through a fermentation process where we add yeast to the uh, mix or the mash is what we call it. That yeast then converts the starches into from complex sugars into simple sugars. And the simple sugars then are what's converted into make ethanol. From the fermentation, which uh, usually occurs around 52 hours, 52, 55, we will then take that mash and, and actually distill that mash where we actually drive the alcohol off and we separate the liquids from the solids. The solids at this point are then uh, dried either through centrifugation or through dryers and then it is processed as a uh, high protein feed ingredient for our livestock. The distillation process where the uh, liquid is uh, driven or separated away from the mash is then distilled which is really what we're doing is pulling the excess water out to where we come up with a 200 proof product with, um, with all the water driven out of that uh, liquid mix. That is then denatured with uh, gasoline, natural gasoline. That denaturant then is uh, to make it void of human consumption. So we end up with a co-product, like I talked about, distiller's grain, and then ethanol from the process uh, is what's produced out of corn conversion into ethanol. Then the ethanol is actually shipped to blenders throughout Michigan and actually uh, throughout the U.S. Uh, it depends on the month, but uh, somewhere probably 90% um, or above remains here within the state. The industry currently produces 5.4 billion gallons annually, and the 87 plants that are currently in production will produce another 6.4 billion gallons. I think it's 5.6 and 6.4. We're only at about 11 billion gallons. That's not even 10% of our petroleum needs. So that's where the cellulose will come in and fill in that gap mm -hmm. to fit with the 25-25 program or the 20 by 30 program. Mm -hmm. There was a young farmer in Dyersville when he had the uh, city council meeting. He stood up and he, he's got a farm about seven miles from our plant. But he's a good hour and a half to two hours away from Dubuque. So on a normal year, he says, this is what it means to my family. We'll have an extra $30,000 in our pockets at the end of the year. I don't, have, I don't have the wear and tear on a semi and a trailer going to Dubuque. It's not going to take me six hours round trip to go there and come back. And I don't have to hire a driver for a day to drive the truck for me. I can get in, I can get in the truck, drive it down to the plant seven miles away, and come back. And he calculated out that was 30000 extra dollars in, into his pocket on an annual basis once the plan's up and running. We weren't going to speculate too much, but as far as a large-scale uh, cellulosic plant, um, any guesses on what something like that could be? I don't have any feedback into that. That's, yeah. Uh, we're not pursuing that. The, oh, I'm very excited about the, the, the potential for cellulosic. Mm -hmm. If the corn will max out at 140 billion, uh, 14 billion gallons per year, and we need 140, that's 10%. Mm -hmm. The cellulosic, there might not be a limit there.